Thank you very much, Elena. Uh, I think the subject of um, national states and the EU has already been uh, evoked by Wolfgang, and I would like to develop this idea. Uh, I will try to present uh, quickly uh, the EU approach towards uh, human rights in Bahrain, and then ask us uh, the question whether more can be done. So how can we characterize the EU approach to human rights in Bahrain? First, it's important to recall uh, an idea, a uh, basic idea, that the principles on which the EU bases its international um, advocacy, its international diplomacy, sorry, are clear. Uh, according to the Lisbon Treaty, uh, the uh, EU um, uh, leads its uh, action on the international stage uh, based on the principles which have inspired its own creation, meaning human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. Uh, this idea is also taken up in the um, Human Rights and Democracy Strategic Framework from 2012, which, I quote, indicates that the EU will place human rights at the center of its relations with all third countries, including strategic partners. So the principles are clear. Then uh, the reality is a bit more complicated. If we uh, study the EU uh, Gulf relations, because it is the framework in which uh, uh, the EU Bahrain relation takes place, um, there is a cooperation uh, agreement that exists since 1988 uh, because the EU considers the region of strategic importance. Of course, uh, the EU is the first trading partner of the GCC countries. And although the GCC countries are only a fifth of the EU uh, trade, they represent 20% of the oil uh, trade. So it, ex it uh, explains uh, the importance. Um, I have to uh, insist on the fact that this cooperation uh, agreement is, uh, to my knowledge, the only uh, regional cooperation agreement or bilateral where the uh, human rights uh, principles are not mentioned even just symbolically. So there is already an exception in the uh, EU uh, general approach uh, towards uh, uh, um, diplomacy. Um, the cooperation agreement covers all the subjects except human rights. Um, Yet, a third idea is that there is no deficit of knowledge on human rights in Bahrain. It was also evoked by the colleagues. Uh, if we count only the European Parliament resolutions since the beginning of the uprising in 2011, we have nine of them. So nearly one to two resolutions a year. And they uh, highlight perfectly the situation in the country and they provide recommendations to Bahrain and the uh, international and Bahraini NGOs. We have worked with the parliament recently so that it also addresses uh, recommendations to the EU because that's where more can be done. So um, how to characterize really the EU approach? Uh, I would say that uh, the EU gives a priority towards private diplomacy and is obsessed by the idea of keeping the door open. Uh, and currently, we don't see uh, tangible re results uh, in this approach. Uh, if we consider the public diplomacy aspects, the uh, statement by the EU uh, can be uh, characterized as sporadic. Uh, they concern the worst situations, but are not comprehensive, and they are very euphemistic. Uh, many times the language used is, first of all, to keep the focus on the dialogue, but no uh, leverage is exercised to advance this idea. And uh, even when uh, there are strong condemnations like for Nabil, uh, the EU never asks explicitly for uh, an immediate or unconditional release as the international and Bahraini NGOs ask for. If I take an example concerning the July statement of Nabil, the spokesperson of the uh, EU foreign affairs representative, not the representative herself, indicates the rearrest of Mr. Nabil Rajab and measures preventing activists from traveling abroad can represent an obstacle to national reconciliation in the kingdom. So it's very indirect, it's not uh, at all condemnatory, uh, etc. Another aspect of the EU diplomacy is what we could uh, um, uh, call the Twitter diplomacy that the EU Special Representative on Human Rights 
is having. He's trying to do his best, but he has no uh, support within the institutions and no leverage to move the member states or to move the uh, EU uh, institutions. Uh, his only weapon is his power of convictions, and uh, that is uh, quite limited. Um, it is interesting to notice that when the EU is very strong, like in uh, June 2014 uh, in Geneva, when all the EU member states joined a condemnatory a joint statement on Bahrain, it leads to uh, a result. In this instance, uh, the GCC cancelled the yearly EU GCC meeting that followed. So we don't say that this is satisfactory. Um, it's only a consequence. But we are saying that uh, we regret that after this event, the EU has lost an opportunity because to our view, the EU should have used uh, this breakdown in the relation to say, okay, uh, now we want to impose a minimum standard to reinstallate the uh, relation, which is we want to speak about human rights in Bahrain, but also the other Gulf countries in uh, the summit. But it's not at all the approach that the EU used. On the contrary, they did all their best to try to regain confidence, being really scared that uh, they would lose the relationship. So they didn't do any effort to use uh, their leverage. There is a lot of work done in private actions by the EU. We are aware of that. Uh, however, uh, currently they have not led to any concrete result. The um, uh, priority given on reform of the judiciary or training of the police like the UK is doing or uh, engagement with the Ombudsman are not uh, leading to uh, anything concrete. Um, the EU has tried to encourage, for example, the Ombudsman uh, by giving it an international prize, which is the Shayo Prize for the Promotion of Human Rights in 2014, um, stating that the confidence in these organizations was increasing and that their efficiency was increasing. But uh, this encouragement is not linked by proper monitoring work to try to uh, work with them on concrete benchmarks on uh, activities on torture, on the number of cases uh, actually taken up, etc., etc. There is also some work by the EU delegation and the uh, EU member states uh, present uh, in Manama, mostly trial observation, but that's not enough either. Uh, a real proactive uh, implementation of the EU guidelines on torture, on uh, human rights defenders, needs to be installed and much more uh, should be done beyond Nabil who is a prominent case but is also one tree in the forest of many other people who, who uh, face uh, judicial harassment. Um, the current solution proposed by the European Union is to install a human rights dialogue. So we are quite uh, uh, skeptic about this proposal, not in the sense that we are against. We work in collaboration with the EU on uh, nearly 40 of similar dialogues, but by experience we notice that dialogues can be useful if they are uh, taking place uh, in a situation where the partner country is willing to reform. Uh, mostly Eastern Europe countries which have an interest to get closer to the EU. Uh, otherwise, if it's uh, a situation where there is no political will and there is no work done at the highest political level to try to obtain this political will, uh, we believe that it's a big mistake that the EU is doing when it believes that only in a technical uh, dialogue you can obtain a change uh, of system because it's a systematic problem that uh, exists in uh, Bahrain in terms of uh, judicial independence, etc. Uh, another uh, good point of the uh, human rights dialogue would be to allow for civil society inclusion, but of course we are far from it with Bahrain. So um, I had a part explaining uh, how to, could we explain that, and it speaks a lot about counter uh, lobbying and PR activities of Bahrain. I think it's very interesting, but I think we don't have much time. 
So I will, I will skip this part, and if we have time for questions, maybe I, I will speak about, about it. I think it's more important to focus on uh, what can uh, do we do more. Uh, as I work in Brussels with the EU, in relation with the EU, I will start by recommendations towards the EU, which are also not very new, but still important to implement. First, as I said, the EU should manage to impose uh, a human rights discussion in the yearly uh, meeting with the GCC and in the sectorial meetings that it can have this, with this region. Um, the EU should implement the human rights guideline much more proactively. Um, the EU should have a real strategy on human rights defenders, not only in Bahrain, but in the Gulf region. Meaning it doesn't need to be a public strategy, but it needs to uh, be a common position that needs to be taken up by the 28 member states so that there is coordinated action and the best use of all the leverage, including economic leverage that the EU has towards those countries. Otherwise, the uh, approach that we have is the co lowest common denominator between the 28 member states, which is uh, the ones imposed by the UK. Um, and I think it's also really important to uh, highlight the reality of the regional conflicts going on uh, uh, in the Arabic Peninsula and the Gulf and the Middle East in general. Uh, even the parliament, which is clearly pro-human rights most of the time, feel the needs to uh, praise Bahrain for its participation in the international coalition against Daesh. Fine, of course, but then uh, shouldn't we speak also about the human rights violation and humanitarian law violation taking place in Yemen? Then it would maybe put a bit uh, more uh, balance in the judgment and the praising we do of Bahrain in this kind of situation. I will finish but about what we can do at the national level because we discussed that this before and I think it's the area where we can work more. I think uh, we can do more in terms of uh, the export of uh, crowd control equipment and more general weapons uh, and technology that are used uh, to violate human rights uh, in Bahrain. Uh, the external action service of the EU uh, repeatedly, repeatedly indicates that it's a sovereign uh, decision of the member state. It is true. So that's where we have to work more in capitals and with the civil society to name and shame states that export uh, arms, but more specifically crowd control equipment and spying uh, equipment to uh, repressive regimes like Bahrain. Uh, the EU is revising its dual use technology. Dual use are civilian technologies that can be used for military purposes. And here we have an entry door to tell them do more than just including the human rights criteria in your regulation. Try to already apply it by engaging with those companies, uh, have a meeting with them and tell them what do you do, what are your due diligence policies, uh, and we uh, call on you to stop those kind of exports. We believe that it's the responsibility of the states to do so. Um, I have other recommendations, but I, I think I will suspend here. The other recommendations uh, are uh, on the training of uh, the judiciary by uh, the UK, which should be much, much more specific. Also about the trade leverage that uh, the UK can have um, towards Bahrain now that it will want to develop a bilateral trade relation. Um, I tried to be as quick as possible because I'm aware that we need to suspend now. Um, but I'd be happy to continue.